So what can you tell me about Sarah Chute? Well, now, Chute is an old Nova Scotian name. Um, it goes back to the 1760s. And we have some of the very old records. These early settlers set up a register. They asked each family for information. Mm -hmm. And here you've got oh, Sarah. Shit. This is the actual document? This is the actual document. See the old handwriting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Born the 3rd of November, 1758. Right. And the last of the family born in New England, her parents, John and Judith, would have been part of the migration around 1760 from those New England colonies. Yep, they would have come up with my, my five times great-grandfather. Yes. Well, this is brilliant. You've, you've found and revealed Sarah to me, so I know, I know where she was born. She was born in what is now America. But I don't know what to do with this information. Where do I go from here? You go southwest, <laughs> leave Nova Scotia, go down to New England. You've got Sarah and you have her parents. Your answers lie wherever they lived before they came to Nova Scotia. Here we go. You're you. off. <laughs> I really did think we were going to get interesting, quirky little stories about small holdings and farms. In fact, what we've got is quite epic. When I was driving back last night through a very heavy blizzard, there was nothing to be seen. There were no lights. We were in complete isolation in heavy snow, with months more heavy snow and isolation to come. And yet, you know, we've got a four by four car, we can come back to a hotel. These guys were completely out on a limb in a very, very wild place. And they did what they needed to do to make it work. And I'm just so full of admiration for them. Richard has discovered that his Canadian ancestors migrated from America when its East Coast territories were part of Britain's empire. Now he must travel to America to find out more. The area known as New England was first settled in 1620 as English colonists arrived in search of political and religious freedom and economic profit. Richard is on his way to Boston, the state capital of Massachusetts. Founded in 1630, Boston was named after its English counterpart in Lincolnshire, and quickly became the most important town of New England, attracting thousands of migrants as the city developed. Richard is hoping to uncover information that will lead him right back to the very start of his North American ancestry. He's going to the Massachusetts archives to meet genealogist and historian Diane Rappaport who's traced Sarah Chute's family back to her great-great-grandparents, Ezekiel and Anne Woodward, in the mid-17th century. Do we know what they did for a living? Well, most people back then were pretty much jacks of all trades. Okay. And Ezekiel, he did some carpentry work. Uh, later on, he became a, a tavern keeper. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, Anne would have, um, she would have spent a lot of time uh, cooking. And then another thing, um, you know, if anyone was sick in the family, they, uh, the women were in charge of uh, generally nursing them. Uh, nursing them. There were, there were uh, women healers and uh, doctors, mm -hmm. uh, but mostly, you know, women, unless it became serious, they, they knew how to make herbal remedies. She would have been uh, taking care of that. And she were they midwives as well? Did they deliver children? There were, there were definitely midwives. In fact, they were very important in the community because most people had large families. Mm. Uh, and anyway, I, here, I'll move this out of the way because I found a document involving Anne and a midwife that mm -hmm. I think you'll find very interesting. How far back does this date? 1650. Anne uh, was involved in what has been called one of the, um, the first uh, collective political actions of American women. Really? There was a midwife 
that named Alice Tilly from Boston. And Alice Tilly had been arrested and imprisoned and, j well, and, mm -hmm. and convicted of basically medical malpractice. Someone under Alice's care must have died in childbirth. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, she, co and she copped the blame for it. Right, and somebody, somebody complained. And uh, so anyway, Anne was uh, one of about 130 women who signed a petition on her behalf. So this is an exclusively female signed petition. These this, are all women. There are no men in this These are, these are all women, right. Okay. These women wanted her wanted her to be released. This was a vote of faith by the, by the women in the community. They, it, they were effectively saying she's a good midwife. Right, and I don't know if you can read, if you want to see. I'll try. This um, is... To um, the right, Honourable John Endicott, Governor, the... And that's Thomas, actually, T-H-O. Oh, Thomas, Thomas Dudley. Thomas Dudley, Esquire, mm -hmm. Deputy Governor. Mm -hmm. What does it say here? Can you read this to um, me? Because I'm very bad at this service. OK. Whereas your petitioners, having had manifold experiences of the skill and ability through the good hand of God, of a useful instrument, they're talking about Alice. Alice, yeah. uh -huh. And we're over here. Yep, who, I'm with you. Who by, um, oh, I, I, let's by see. By providence? Who by oh, providence? By providence has become a prisoner to your worships. Yeah. Um, Namely, Alice Tilly. Well, and therein, several crimes written on her forehead. Is it, no, that's, that's a metaphor. They're not, that, they're, I yes, think that yeah, was yeah, a yeah, metaphor. Yeah. Although, in, you know, in those days, sometimes people would be branded be on branded? their forehead with whatever their... Hence, that, that, I think, hence that expression. Crimes written on her forehead, which peradventure God uh, nor her own conscience uh, may lay to her charge. They're saying, you know, she's innocent. She, she's innocent. Before God. Uh-huh, right. So where's my great, 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 great grandmother signature then in this one? <laughs> All right, well, she's in the fourth column. She's the second from the top. And you can see without Anne. an E. Uh, now, the last name is very hard to read. So I can see a W, mm -hmm. and I can, it certainly finishes with an RD. And you're telling me that this was one of the first recorded community actions by women in a political context in, in America? Yes, and it was one of the in, unprecedented in terms of numbers. So, um, so Anne, uh, Anne was a feisty woman, clearly. The petition Anne signed was one of several delivered to the authorities. In total, 217 women stood up against the governors and succeeded in securing the release of Alice Tilly. At a time when many women were only allowed the most basic education, had no right to own property, and no say in the governing of their communities, this was an unprecedented collective statement. Nearly three centuries before women were granted the right to vote in the United States. All right, let's talk about her husband then, Ezekiel. Okay. Have you found out stuff about him? All right, I have indeed. Oh, so this is his baptismal record. This is back in England in Pottington, Bedfordshire. Pottington, did you say? Uh, P-O-D-D-I-N. Oh, Pottington. Pottington, I may not pronounce it no, the, that's way, right. the way... Uh, in Bedfordshire. Oh, right. so right, so here we are. So, so he actually wasn't born in Massachusetts, Ezekiel. He, he came from England. He was born about 1624 and... He is on this document. So Ezekiel Woodfilius, son of Nathaniel Woodward. Is that? Baptized. Baptized. I think. Something um, may, anyway. It, uh -huh. so, so we know it was 1624. 1624. We know that he was, he was the son mm -hmm. of Nathaniel Woodward, and he was baptized in May of that year. And he came over to New England, and he definitely left records mm -hmm. as well and was feisty, like Anne. In what way? What, what do you mean feisty? Well, let me show you. He also petitioned <laughs> uh, the general court. A and I, rebels, these two, aren't Yeah, they? right. This is a petition that Ezekiel... Just, uh, just a one-man petition? A one-man petition, right, yes. <laughs> what's, he, what's, he, what's he moaning about here? Well, do you want to see if you can... Okay. Whereas your petitioner... Uh, was in the time of the war bearing the office of a sergeant mm -hmm. yeah, and can get no more no more satisfaction of the treasurer uh, it's about money this isn't it's it it's about money yes <laughs> <laughs> uh, than uh, that which belongs to a common soldier 
Yes. As witness, Bay. my hand. Mm -hmm. And then it says, the mark of Ezekiel Woodward. He's obviously owed money. He wasn't paid as a sergeant should have been paid right. in, in this war. So which and war was this? This was King Philip's War, and not too many people really even know about Is that it. Is Philip it's, of Spain? No, no. no it, it, Philip, this was a, a Native American. Indians, Native Americans were living amidst the colonists mm -hmm. in a lot of parts of New England, and more or less peacefully for many years. But in June of 1675, uh, tensions erupted. You and know, Ezekiel I, was, was in the thick of it. He signed on for to what was called the Narragansett uh, campaign, uh, where they, uh, that was fought mostly in Rhode Island, mm -hmm. uh, in one of the most bloody and uh, difficult parts of the war. So that's all really I can discover here in Boston. I've got to go, is it south to Rhode Island to find out more? Rhode Island is where, where the battle occurred. Diane, thank you so much. Well, thank that's you. Really good, thank, thank you. you.